In the history of San Francisco, there has always been a divide between the well-off and the impoverished. While there are few ways to correct this ever-increasing divide, San Francisco's hierarchy have, over the years, masked their true intentions under the umbrella of helping the poor. But first came the earthquake of 1906, leveling much of downtown, leaving the surviving residents to deal not only with the flames from the quake, but the problem of housing. The solution was found by moving downtown into the bustling Fillmore District, a neighboring Japantown. Downtown was later rebuilt, and the city went back to normal until the Second World War. After the end of the war, increased population in the Fillmore caused buildings to become a overrun and overcrowded bunch of Victorians. This overcapacity allowed for key members of San Francisco government to define a new term for the age, blight. Blight meant the city could use a law which gave them the power to take private property for public use. With the new term, blight, city government could use the outdated law to take these homes and redevelop all of the Fillmore district and Japantown. If done correctly, city's plan to redevelop this area would have done wonders, providing newer and safer homes for the community. But instead, the seemingly helpful project turned into a long, slow, and overall not productive project which spawned visual eyesores. Twenty years later, San Francisco redevelopment struck again with the Yerba Buena Center. San Francisco's rich and powerful families persuaded the public with propaganda making redevelopment sound helpful for all when in reality, deals were being cut under the table to push out the previous residents of the area and keep them out. After seeing the dirty dealings of San Francisco government and its rich backers, San Franciscans living in impoverished areas became weary of redevelopment in their home district. Hunters Point, or Bayview Hunters Point, is a neighborhood in the southeastern part of San Francisco, California. Formerly a port for the naval base, it was named after a local family during the 19th century. It runs along the main artery of 3rd Street from India Basin to Candlestick Point. Hunters Point Shipyard is home to many family businesses, community organizations, recording studios, and churches. Bayview Hunters Point has been one of the most influential communities in San Francisco. At the turn of the century, the road was no more than a wagon trail. Until being discontinued in the 1950s, Southern Pacific rail cars steamed along a rugged waterfront that was still wild between clumps of one and two-story wooden commercial building. The train ran from Town's End and King Streets, crisscrossing what is now third and running passengers directly through the neighborhood. Until the mid-1900s, the Bayview Hunters Point neighborhood was critical to San Francisco as the city's food shed. Its pastures were filled with livestock and family farms. Residents almost always had a backyard garden to supply their own tables and Chinese fishermen and others actively harvested the bay. The docks were a thriving open-air market that many residents still remember as the best place to buy shrimp. Small industries speckled in the area. Food and supplies trekked north on 3rd Street to the hot spots of San Francisco. Bayview Hunters Point is one of the last remaining African-American communities in San Francisco. Its rich culture and diversity makes it unique from many of the other populations. These families are the grassroots of this area. San Francisco is renowned for its beauty, enlightenment, and progressiveness. Families live a very different existence than many others in San Francisco. Children of Bayview Hunters Point must endure the harsh reality of poverty, drug abuse, and overwhelming violence. But day after day, hope is inspired in these children through the transformation of Hunters Point. Throughout the years, the plans have greatly evolved, from developing the homes to improving the nutrition for families. There are plans to increase its ability to meet the unique needs of the community. That means not only providing basketball courts, but offering nutrition counseling for families battling diabetes, plus job training for young adults. The Boys and Girls Club also is setting up a chapter on the hill this spring and will offer after-school programs. In addition to the new pediatric office, farmer's market, and India Basin Playground, good new things for kids in the neighborhood include an expansion of the local YMCA, which opened only eight years ago, and a privately funded program training neighborhood teenagers in entrepreneurship as they deliver much needed fresh produce to residents. Meanwhile, the school district has begun transforming some low-performing schools in Bayview Hunters Point into schools with more resources and counselors and after-school programs than they used to receive. And USIM has worked to improve basketball courts, playgrounds, and letting of public housing projects in hopes to find funding to tear down and rebuild the aging Hunters View project. During the preparation of this redevelopment plan, 
the redevelopment agency of the city and county of San Francisco consulted with the PAC, the planning department, and other departments of the city and county of San Francisco. This plan was adopted in 1969 to replace and rehabilitate former military housing units. At this moment, Project Area A in this plan is nearly complete. The neighboring India Basin Industrial Park Redevelopment Plan was designed to rebuild the blighted industrial area into a modern job center for the community. In 1995, the community completed planning work on the South Bayshore Area Plan. The PAC created the community revitalization concept plan for Bayview Hunters Point in 2000, which outlined a wide range of programs intended to bring about physical and economic improvements in the community. Conflict arises because both sides of the Bayview Hunters Point redevelopment issue believe that they represent the Bayview community. Francisco da Costa, activist and opponent of the shipyard redevelopment, touts himself as a defender of the poor. His main concerns lie in the environmental hazards and health risks surrounding the redevelopment project. Interestingly, he often attacks District 10 supervisor Sophie Maxwell, who was motivated to become politically active when her son died due to toxins in the Bayview Hunters Point. Supervisor Maxwell possesses a wholly opposite opinion of that of Francisco da Costa. As a resident of Bayview Hunters Point for more than 20 years, she believes the community can be bettered by addressing the health risks. Both da Costa and Supervisor Maxwell are credible representatives of the Bayview community. Obviously, we cannot continue to think of the community as a unified voice with one opinion. Because redevelopment has created a veritable blight of its own on San Francisco history, it is difficult to say with confidence that we should allow more of it to happen. But the redevelopment agency, like San Francisco and the rest of the world, evolves with the times so it is eager to compensate for past blunders. The main difference between the Hunter's Point project and past redevelopment is that the festering toxic wound that is the shipyard is not home to any sort of thriving community. In its already languishing state, change could only imp bring improvement. As much fun as it is to hold grudges, it is time to give the redevelopment agency a chance. Maybe they'll get it right this time.